All right, if we can have everyone's attention, we'll go ahead and get started. All right, for those of you who don't know me, I'm AJ Dominic. I'm the Senior Events Manager at US Rowing. Uh, just want to start off thanking you all for coming and racing this week. Uh, again, another record year of entries. It's exciting to see the growth at this event and in the sport in general. So uh, thank you all for, for being here and for racing this summer. Uh, to get started, I want to recognize all the various groups of people that come together to put this race on this year. Um, starting with Cooper River, the Camden County Board of Freeholders, uh, the Camden County Boathouse, South Jersey Rowing Club and all their volunteers. Uh, they do a lot of hard work to make sure the, the venue is set up for you guys. So let's give them a, a quick round of applause. And I also want to especially recognize we've got a group of volunteer referees here this week. Uh, they're, they were selected as some of the best from each of their regions and they're just like you, truly from across the country. Uh, they've given up their time uh, as volunteers to come and make sure you guys have a great week. So let's give them a quick round of applause as well. All right, I've got a couple of quick things and I'll turn it over to the, the chief referee. Uh, credentials, your yellow wristbands. Make sure you have one. Make sure all of your teammates have them. Uh, you need them to launch. You need them to weigh in. Uh, so make sure you have those before you try to race tomorrow. Um, if anyone doesn't have one, just come to the registration tent. We can get them printed as long as their memberships are, are all in order. So make sure those are taken care of so you don't have to rush from the dock or anything like that. Heat sheets are online. They're on the US Rowing website as well as the Here Now website. Um, those heat sheets are live, so as we make changes, they change as that happens. Uh, so to help let, and let you know when the changes have stopped for the day, coaches, I will send an email every night when I've stopped making changes for the day just to let you know that it's up to date. Um, tonight, that won't go out until after the 9 o'clock lineup deadline, uh, but every other night, you will get it before 9 o'clock. So just to let you know around when to expect that. Um, that's your clue to let you know all the changes from registration are in for the day. As I mentioned, lineup changes. Make sure you get those in on Regatta Central tonight by 9 p.m. After that, you'll have to do it at the registration tent, and there's a $5 charge that comes with that. So make sure you get all of those in tonight um, just to make it easier on everybody. Bow numbers. If you picked up your registration packet, you should have your bow number for tomorrow's time trials. Um, once we get to Thursday and Friday for sprint racing, you will get those bow numbers at the docks from the referees. Uh, they're the alphanumeric numbers, so uh, each race has the same letter in front of the lane number. So coxswains, when you're on the water, you can group yourselves. Whatever your letter is on your bow number, all the other crews in your race will have the same letter. So you'll know to kind of stick around the, if you're a B, to stick around the other Bs in the warm-up area. And that'll just help everything run a little more quickly as we're on the water. If you have, if you have uh, crews racing in Friday's time trials, you can pick those bow numbers up at registration starting Thursday. Uh, we're recycling the numbers. So, uh, so just stop by registration on Thursday and we'll, we'll hand those to you. Uh, just make sure you do it before you try to race Friday afternoon. All right, that's all I have. I'll turn it over. Lloyd McDonald's our chief referee for this weekend. So I'll turn it over to him for any rules related things. All right, good afternoon everybody. As uh, AJ said, my name's Lloyd McDonald. I'm from Stillwater, Minnesota. This is the fourth clubs that I've had the, the pleasure to be part of, so I'm glad uh, that I'm here and all you guys are here as well. Are there any coxswains here? Is this a coxswain? All the way up. All right, in front, who's the best? Who's the best? They're too far back. In front, who's the best? All right, come here. Okay, your job is to follow along and make sure I cover everything. Okay? So if I miss something, you bring it, you bring it to my attention. Okay, as AJ mentioned, this is a U.S. rowing uh, registered and owned regatta. Uh, what that means is that we will be conducting uh, the regatta uh, to the rules. Those are our rules uh, for rowing in the United States. We have uh, 33 referees from across the United States. They're kind of scattered in the uh, audience out there, so guys, stick your hands up. 
but they're literally from all four corners of the, of the United States. Ruth McNamara, who's hiding back here, is the, the deputy. She and I will be uh, the ones you're most likely to run into if you're in the finish area uh, or you have a question. So I will look like this the entire week. And Ruth uh, will be dressed like this. So please, if you have a question, ask it. We want, uh, we want to make sure everybody gets, uh, gets the information they need. We're going to do this meeting in three sections. We're going to talk about from weigh-ins to control commission through the finish line for coxswains and lightweights. So the whole, the whole progression. We've got a couple special pieces of information for coaches. And then we're going to talk about tomorrow's time trials. And we're doing that last so that uh, you remember it because I think that's the biggest thing on everybody's mind right now. Coxswain and lightweight weigh-ins. Please, every coxswain and lightweight weighs in once per day, every day you are racing. It's easy to figure out when it is. So if your first race of the day is at 10 a.m., your window to come weigh in down at the other, at the other launch area is between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. So it's, a, it's two hours before to one hour before. That applies to lightweights and coxswains. So if it's 10 o'clock, it's from 8 to 9. If you have three races that day, you're going to fill out paperwork for three. So we'll get you all taken care of in one, in one shot. Lightweights need to arrive together. Everybody has to be there, and you need to line up from bow to stern. We have seven scales to use for both coxswains and lightweights, and so we should be able to move everybody through quickly, but the better organized you are, the better organized we'll be, and we'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to uh, deal with it uh, effectively. During your weigh-in window, there's no test or practice weighing. Once your window opens, you step on the scale, you're, you're, weighing for, um, you're weighing for real. Any lightweight that is any more than one pound overweight, one point anything, 1.1, 1 .1, you're ineligible to compete. One pound or less, you'll get another chance to try uh, to, try to weigh in. And you must be in, uh, in racing attire. Launching. Don't forget, if you're carrying weight, please don't forget it. There's not a lot we can do for you if, you, if, you, if you're supposed to carry it and you don't bring it. We will be doing safety checks on the boats. We're checking for bow ball and heel ties. The bow ball has to be firmly affixed, so if it's about to come off, ask your coach or you guys fix it yourselves so that it's not going to come off. And make sure that, that your heels are tied down. There are two kinds of shoes that we're running into um, a lot that people have questions about. The Shimano shoes are fine. They're not an issue at all. You twist your foot, they come right off. They're, they're perfectly fine. There's a new shoe out there, and I think it's called Project B, that I know, I, I think the Penn AC boats have, uh, have those shoes. They have to be tied down. If they are not tied down, you will not be permitted to, uh, uh, to launch. And every pair of them that I've seen yesterday and today has not had any strings on it at all. So, guys, please make sure that those are... Uh, uh, those are corrected. You're not in conformance, you can't uh, launch. Okay, so you're going to launch from one of three places, down at Cuthbert, behind the restaurant, or at the boathouse. You progress along the shoreline. Stay away from the course, okay? You will go around a, a, a narrowing at about 250 meters from the start, and that will bring you into the warm-up area. For sprint racing, you can warm up there in a counterclockwise pattern, so from shore out to shore out, uh, ahead of your race. We'll talk about time trials uh, specifically in a second. But be, you know, show the other athletes courtesy. When a race is going by, you should stop rowing, and uh, don't get too close uh, to, the, uh, to the course. So pay attention to the marshals. They're up there to really make this as easy a process as you can. So you're going to be collected at the top of the cove on the side of the course and invited to enter. And you're going to be asked to go on the course high numbers first. So six to one. That's because six is the farthest lane away. When you go across, don't go more than one boat length away from the platform. Get in your lane, turn, and back in. The farther you have to back, the harder it is. So do yourself a favor and get in, uh, get in close. 
if we get a crosswind, you're going to have to scull your bow in order to keep your point. If you don't know how to do that, talk to your coach. But we can't have your rowing, having bow or two seat row, to get your point. You'll pull off the stake boat, and uh, that's not, uh, uh, not a good situation. It's your responsibility to be locked on and ready to race not later than two minutes before scheduled race time. And your boat must be fit for racing. So any issues you had, anything needs to be tightened or whatever, needs to get done before you back in. Uh, if you're late, you can expect to be assessed a warning. warning a single warning is not a bad thing. If you get two of them, you're excluded from that race. And so you don't want to have that happen. So you're late and have a false start, your race is over. Okay, what you just heard me do, if you listen, is I called the time almost exactly the way you're going to hear it called this week uh, for the sprint racing. You're going, to hear, you're going to hear probably eight or seven minutes instead of ten, and then you're going to hear five and so forth down to the, to the two-minute call. So get backed on, ready to go at two minutes. If you need to work on your point, make sure you're doing it by sculling. And as I said before, just like we started this at the stroke of six o'clock, you can expect that your race is going to start at the published time. The start process is that the starter will begin to announce the cruise by name in an even cadence. Northwestern, Harvard, Yale, all the way down through all six boats. Use that time to make final adjustments to your boat. That's your time to get ready. They then will call out the word attention. A red flag comes up. They'll say go, and as soon as that flag begins to move, that's when you, uh, that's when you go. Once we've started announcing names, we will not be recognizing hands. We have two people on the start tower who, fo who are focused on making sure that everybody is set and everybody's pointed correctly to go down the, to go down the course. Uh, if you go prior to the movement of the flag, that's a false start. We're going to stop the race, and you're going to get assessed uh, a warning. The first 100 meters, which is marked with red buoys, is the start area. If something breaks, literally breaks in your boat, stop rowing and get your hands up, and we'll come over uh, and deal with it. We will attempt to make repairs uh, if it can be done in a reasonable period of time. It is super important, and coaches for you too, if you've got boats on the water, make sure they know who to get a hold of and how to get a hold of them so that we can expedite getting uh, an oar or whatever we might need uh, out, to your, um, out to your boat. Once any part of your boat is rowed through the 100 meters, you have accepted the fairness of the start. So it's not subject to uh, protest after you've gone through 100 meters. So once, everybody's, once you're through there, uh, we're on our way to the race. So what are the referees here to do? When you're racing, you are entitled to the unimpeded use of your lane. And what that means is from zero to 2,000, if you're in lane two, all of lane two is yours. And we will work to make sure that nobody interferes with your ability to progress down the that lane just as quickly as you can. If we need somebody to move because they look like they might interfere with somebody, the referee's gonna, gonna put a white flag up, call the crew's name out from behind, drop the flag in the direction they want them to go. Make the move right away. So essentially, if you hear your name called during a race, you need to be doing something. At the finish line, the biggest thing you can do, row through the buoys. Don't listen to horns or flags or any of that stuff. As soon as your bow gets through those buoys, you've crossed the finish line. We hate it when we see people stop short. If you have a medical issue in your boat, we want to see a lot of hands in the air. So no, uh, you know, let us know right away if there's a medical issue. We have uh, the referees are prepared to, to come and, and help assist you on the water. And we have the EMTs here for everybody's information. The EMT is going to be in the Cuthbert parking lot near the dock that's designated for boat weighing. So it's the, it's the closest dock to here. Okay, what are the referees doing? At the end of the race, we're looking to make sure everybody's okay and to see whether or not anyone has an objection to the conduct of the race. This is important. If you have a question about the way in which your race was held, you need to get your hand in the air. And when you put your hand up, keep it up there until the referee comes over and, and talks to you. And they will talk to you, ask you what your objection is, 
and they will render a decision on the spot. You know, I think I was interfered with in the first 250. Referee looks at it and said, well, it really didn't seem that material, especially considering, you know, where you finished. So I don't agree that it's interference. They're going to ask you whether or not you accept that. If you accept it, the issue's over. It's your decision to make, not your coaches or anybody else. The athlete on the water makes the decision. If you accept it, it's over. If you don't accept it, then, uh, then we're going to file, you're going to file a protest, which means you're going to write up what you, what you want to have happen and why it happened in that race, and you're going to bring it to the ombudsman who's going to be at the finish line. So right over in this area over here. Tell us, make sure you tell us, I'm getting, I'm getting hints from behind here. <laughs> make sure you tell us what you want. Don't make us guess as to what resolution you're looking for. Okay, you have got to do that on the water. And so what the referees are going to do after they look and make sure everybody's okay, after they look for hands, they're going to raise a white flag and they're going to pan it across the water. They're going to show it to everybody. Then they're going to show it to the finish line. When that happens, that race is over. It's not subject to further review. So please, if you've got a question, ask it. Don't leave the water with a question. Okay, um, if you're if you're going to be checked, if your coxswain weight's going to be checked, the um, uh, finish marshal is going to ask you to show your weight. So I just lift it up and show it to them. Um, boats from every event will be randomly selected to be weighed. And I, I hope many of you have been to the weigh-in tent down at the other end, the big long tent with the scales in it, to test weigh your boats. There is nothing worse on Friday than having somebody lose a medal because their boat's underweight. So please, take the chances when you're out there to test weigh your boats. We will be opening the scales at 7 a.m. every day to make sure that everybody has an adequate time to do that. And we've been here since 2 o'clock yesterday uh, for that as well. So please, weigh your boats. Everything readily removable's got to be removed. Get all the clothing and shoes and stuff, whatever might be in it, water bottles out of it. If it's got, if it's got um, ports, you've got to open the ports and make sure there's nothing in them. And present the boat in, inside um, ready to be weighed. And the, the, the referees that are there will meet you on the dock, and then they'll take you through the process. It's pretty, if you haven't done it, it's pretty straightforward, but I hope everybody has done it. It is unsportsmanlike conduct to do anything to increase the weight of your boat once you've been selected for weighing. So if we see people splashing water in the boat or do anything that we think is questionable, uh, that's an unfortunate thing that, that we will have to deal with uh, pretty, pretty severely. All right, we talked about boat weighing. Okay, coaches, just uh, your attention, please. And the reason I bring some of these things up is that every one of the regattas that I've done, one or, one or more of these things has happened. Line, please make sure your lineups are, are accurate. And the, the, uh, we're not going to let it launch with, it, with a lineup that conflicts with what's in the iPad. Really speeds things up if your lineups are, are accurate. It goes without saying that using the time trial as an example, the people in that boat are then expected to be the same people in the semifinal unless there's a, a valid medical reason. So make sure you've got the same athletes going through because we will be checking. <clears throat> Any of you that are here for later in the week, the coaches and the athletes are responsible for making sure that everybody that's in that boat is the, in an event that is skill delineated is eligible to compete. So we, we can't check who won Henley or whatever it might be or, or Canadian Henley to, to do that. It's your responsibility to make sure your athletes are eligible. Um, one thing, so just to, to hope, I don't know that we'll get it out of the way or not, but I want to make sure that you understand. The thing that the referees talk about the most, coaches, is how do we not wake crews? We are more sensitive, sensitive to it than I, think, than I think you guys are. And we do everything we can to make sure that even if a crew's trailing, that they still get a good experience and don't get waked. However, as I started out when I talked about the, the concept of you've got the unimpeded use of your lane, somebody has to be close enough to take action if something's going to happen. And that occasionally will cause one of the boats to move forward, and we will do what we can to make sure that nobody gets waked. Uh, we really don't want to do it any more than you want to see it uh, happen. 
Uh, the good news about the weather is this may be the hottest day of the week. We look at the weather constantly, and we will suspend racing only when it's a safety issue. And U.S. Rowing will be communicating with you directly about that. Uh, we take that very seriously. Uh, last year we did it preemptively and got people off in Cincinnati, I think within 15 minutes before the storm arrived. Uh, so we, we, uh, we, take it, we take it as a serious thing. And we will try to do what we can to either compress or make up time or whatever. But when we do it, we're doing it for safety and we need everybody to cooperate. Okay, we're at the end almost. Have I covered everything so far? So far. Okay, good. For the time trials, we are going to run a big head race tomorrow. And that's the way to think about it. Launching is going to be compressed. The weigh-in windows, are, there are not that many of them, fortunately. There are no lightweights in the time trials. But the weigh-ins are going to be a little bit compressed. So the better organized you are and the more ready you are to go, the less time you're going to spend standing, holding your boat, waiting to go down on the dock. We will do everything we can. I've got six people, three down there, two at the restaurant, and one at the boathouse, whose only job is to get the administrative stuff done as quickly as we can to get you on the water. But you've got to help by being ready and uh, prepared and ready to go. The thing that slows things up the worst is if the heel ties aren't done, because we will be checking, and if the heel ties aren't tied, that boat's not going on the water. Okay. So again, we'll work together and we'll get it done. So you'll be collected. You're gonna, when you get down here to the narrow point, there's going to be a, what I'm calling the greeting marshal. Say hello to them. They will greet you and direct you in. If, you're t if there's a time sensitive issue, they may tell you to go straight up right away. But listen to the instructions that you get from that marshal. As you're going out, you should be trying to put yourselves in bow number order. It is very important that we try to get you down in bow number order. It saves a lot of potential administrative issues. Uh, that, um, that we can really avoid if we've got you in order. So work with each other, know your number, look around, and help get yourselves in order. You will be brought in rows of about two or three boats, depending on what the wind's like. We're going to stack you up. The first bound numbers are going to be in front, next, and so forth, to get you so in a position so that when you're going onto the course, you're going on and only making one 90 degree turn. You don't want to go towards, turn, turn. It's really inefficient. So we want to send you as straight across as we can into your lanes to get, um, so you only have to make one turn to get into position. If your bow number is an even number, you're going to be in lane three. If it's an odd number, you're going to be in lane five. Okay? You're going to get started a boat is going to start every 20 seconds, which means you're 40 seconds behind, approximately 40 seconds behind the boat that went off in front of you. The guys that are behind you are 40 seconds behind you. Okay? You're going to have 100 meters, plus or minus, to get into racing cadence and get moving when you go across the line. The line is at 100 meters. You're going to see the red buoys are going to stop because that's the start area. And uh, you're then, then you're on the course racing. So whatever speed you want to be at when you start your race, that's where you want to hit it, right on that, right on that spot. Yeah, no sounds, no nothing. Okay, you're just going to go. So when, it, when the red buoys stop, you're going to be, you, you may hear somebody say the word mark, but we're not, going to, we're not brossing a horn or amplifying anything. Yes, sir. The officials are the officials count the twenty seconds. So the yeah. So no. So what we will do? There will be two people standing on on stake boats. The first person will help them get into their lane. The second person is is actually between four and uh, three and five, and will tell you know, bow number three begin. But, and that's your signal. That's, a, that's an excellent clarification. Thank you. Uh, they will tell you to begin. Please, when they tell you to begin, begin. And don't stop. 
as you're coming onto the course, don't stop. Stay close together. The closer together you are as we bring you in, the easier it goes, the faster it goes. We've got some 40, 50, 60 boat events out there. And uh, the, again, the more efficiently we do it, the better experience everybody has. Okay. We will talk about that. Okay, if, um, if something breaks, so there's broken equipment in the head race as well, or in the time trial, excuse me. In the time trial, if something breaks in the first 100 meters, you, there will be a referee boat and a buoy sitting at 200 meters, so that's 100 meters from where you started. Stop. If you're in lane three, you're gonna go to lane two. If you're in lane five, you're gonna go to lane six, so move away from the other boat. Okay, that's how we make sure we keep you away from each other. And the referee up there will, will help, uh, help attend to it. You have, we're going to start a clock. There's 30 minutes to fix whatever's broken. And that's just something we do in the time trials. It's a little different in the sprint racing. But in the time trials, if it can't be fixed in 30 minutes, I'm afraid you're either going to have to row the way it is, which, which is your choice, assuming that we believe it's safe, uh, or you're going, to have to, you're going to have to scratch. Okay. Uh, as Dennis just asked, if you get up there, if you get up there late, but your event is still being started, so you're, you're essentially you're out of numerical order, you will get put at the end, and you'll go down just the way uh, you normally would. And we'll, because you got your bound number, we'll get the times captured correctly, and and uh, and uh, so forth. If we've started the next event, then you've missed your race, and you will not compete. So we will, unfortunately, we'll have to send your boat down afterwards. All the times for that event are captured within that event, so nothing afterwards. Okay? It's, um, it, it does happen that people get passed, and so coxswains work with your strokes that if a boat is coming within one length of you, You've got to move to the outside. Just like I said, three goes to two, five goes to six. You have to move to the outside and yield giving them their lane. We will have referees every 250 meters along the course. If you interfere with somebody and impede their progress, you're going to get excluded, which means uh, your time doesn't count. So like any head racing, the best thing you can do is stay away from each other. Okay? Okay, same thing at the finish line. Finish marshal will ask for uh, cocks and weights if you're carrying weight, and the, um, uh, you'll be notified if you need to go over uh, and have your boat weighed. Did I cover everything? I didn't talk about drones. No drones. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, thank you. Um, no, don't let – nobody – no parents, no, coach, no privately – flown drones. We're flying them, U.S. Rowing's flying them uh, with professional pilots and, uh, and, and so forth. Okay, regatta time is whatever your cell phone says. Be happy to answer any questions. Yes? The, the scales will be open. You're going to have to get your, if you want to weigh it before racing tomorrow, you're going to have to either do it at practice tonight or in the morning. But you, there's no practice in the morning. That's correct. Anything else? Yes. Then just have, uh, be, you know, be the coxswain and stroke or, you know, just look, point at it, look at it. Well, we know, we know how much weight's being carried. So if, they, if it's obvious they can't pick it up, we'll come take a quick look. Remember, and I, if I say this now, somebody's going to do it. We want the coxswain weight, not any weight you've added to the boat. Okay, so don't leave the weight that's added to the boat. Leave it alone. We just want to see the coxswain weight. Other questions? All right, well, we very much appreciate you all being here. Thank you very much, and have a great week.